is about as decorated a kickboxer as has come into this division in some time, DC. And if we get a kickboxing match tonight, he ain't losing. He is a championship-level kickboxer, a guy that can stand in the pocket and trade and kick and punch with anyone. He's constantly throwing things from as close as you can get. He's comfortable throwing leg kicks. He will drive these into your body. But it's the aggressiveness and the ability and willingness to stand in the pocket and trade that makes him truly, truly special. I think that is what separates kickboxing the high level yeah. from everyone else. He understands distance as well as any striker in this division. Of course, that is a byproduct of a lifetime of repetitions in the kickboxing space. Lou Crockle, and he finds himself in another big spot here tonight. anticipated middleweight encounter. To get us started with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Big Daddy. Herb Dean, third party in the octagon Three. tonight. Four. All right, here we are, back inside Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. And it seems like every time the UFC comes here, something special happens. UFC 192, obviously an epic title fight between you and Alexander Gustafson. UFC 166, one of the greatest fight cards of all time. Houston's got another one in store tonight. Yes, tonight you have a chance to make your own history. We saw Melendez versus Sanchez. Me and Gustafson put on a show there. Velasquez and Dos Santos put on a show there. Will you be remembered like we have at the Toyota Show? Beautiful jab there by Rockwell. Goes to the switch kick and lands. You got that weapon in your arsenal, right? It is a great strike, and I've done it a number of times. I actually threw it in both fights against Steve Mimeo. Oh, and he connects there. Oh, nice knee. Oh, and there is another knee, and that has certainly been the primary weapon of choice for him here tonight. He has inflicted a ton of damage to his opponent and a lot of it courtesy of those knees. Just out of range with that right hand. Under three minutes to go in round one. Oh, nice headlock. He's got it in. Oh, how good is that as he gets out? That is great submission defense, keeping everything short and not allowing his opponent to get the submission victory. Right to the knee on belly. Gains great posture and starts raining down punches. If his opponent does not move, this fight is going to be stopped. Looks 
Looks like Rockhold's able to transition back to side control now. All right, north-south position now, DC. We'll see how he chooses to advance from here. Oh, looks like he's got that submission locked in. Starting to get deep. Wow, somehow, some way, he gets the arm out. It looked like he was done, John, but he was able to stay comfortable, stay patient, and now he finds himself safe. Oh, right, it's a no. You've got to start to get to the get-up process. Because everybody talks like you just get up and you don't. It's a process, right? You get to the underhook, you go to the elbow, then you start to gain height to get back to your feet. Well, his opponent has done a pretty good job staying in the fight despite the fact that he has absorbed so many flush knees and to so many different locations. Look at those stats there, bottom of your screen. Absolutely incredible. Under 20 seconds now to go. Well, you see him land the jab there. He's got the reach advantage. He might as well use it. Oh, making this clinch work count. Lands the punch there. Oh, saved by the bell. That's the end of the round. You heard the horn, and it came just as he was stunned by a huge shot right before the end of the round. So, saved by the bell. Back to the stool. 60 seconds with which to recover. We'll see if his corner can keep his head in the fight. All right, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went headhunting, landed, nearly got the finish, too. A lot of coaches tell you don't headhunt. In this Where's case, right? he's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on news. Well, maybe he'll look to set up that hook again. Leg kick. Engages in the single power time. Oh, there's a takedown attempt. Big strike lands. Big strike lands. Now he needs to try to chase down that win. It's a right hand. Real nice body kick lands. Close he throws, he lands. Nice jab there by Rocker. Just over three minutes to go now. Wow, actually got the takedown. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Oh, it's getting deep. I thought it was over. I thought this fight was over. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position up the bottom. Drops down inside the now closed guard of his opponent. Let's see how patient he is as he attacks a submission or big ground and bust. Under two minutes to go here in our second round. Oh, what do we got here? Looks like an arm triangle attempt. Ooh, arm triangle's in tight. It's getting in very tight. Oh, that has got to be it. Yeah, Paige and Alexio Lennox. Somehow he got out, though. Great job clearing the hips, facing, and getting out of that Ezekiel choke attempt. Moving his head pretty well defensively on the ground here. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous, but there are a lot of outs. And if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. Great shot from the top position. Great defense by this fighter. Oh, and the oh. sounds on round two. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Okay, you lost that round. You listen to me, you lost big. He's taking you down way too easily, and you're not even trying to get back up.
I want you to put Bill. All right, so there's the end of the round. It had a little bit of everything and nearly a finish due to a submission. But you see, when you're on the ground with him, you're in danger. You ready you're constantly ready. under attack. Good. There is no place to rest. Where you can rest with most guys, you got to be very aware against this guy or he's going to catch you in something that you can't get out of. He throws a big red right hand but doesn't find its home. on them. Huge shots being landed on both sides. Takedown defense holds up. Uppercut lands. Champ, look at that redness underneath his elbow. A lot of those strikes to the bottom. He's going to get What a win for him tonight, and he gets it done by submission, no less. He said he was going to get it done by submission. To watch an athlete call the shot is always fun. He should be very proud. All right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlight. He's such a phenomenal grappler. I don't understand how people don't know that this guy wants to submit you. He is the best grappler, best submission specialist we've seen in a long time. Now we go inside the octagon to Bruce Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at 1 minute, 23 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by tap out, Big Daddy! Well, what an incredible result here tonight as you see the winner there celebrating his victory by way of submission. And they put so much stock into finishing this fight. They felt like to really spin his career forward, they needed to not just win, but get the finish, and they certainly got it tonight. They got the finish. He's such a terrific grappler. Every time he's on his back, he looks for submissions over and over again. Eventually, he found one.